So let's start off with the loop because I know there's a lot of low end in the loop. And you, you can use stock plugins, bro. Like, you just need to understand the concept of all these different effects. So with the EQ, I'm going to blow this up. I haven't up um I haven't updated my FL Studio to 20.8 but Now I'm going to show you how you can use your eyes right here as well. You can see these purple lines, right? So rule of thumb is that, you know, with your sounds cuz your bass is going to hit from the sub to the bass and you just want to leave room. So instead of like figuring out how to like really hear it just look at it there's no more purple right here but you don't want it too low and i know you can hear that it just thins out the sound so you want a le at least a little sound in the bass this is good enough and then you could cut out some highs because the highs ain't even really there And that's going to come in handy for your hi-hats or any of the sounds that's prominently in the high end. And you just kind of want to hear your sounds and do the same thing. I'm gonna just kind of take down this because I know this part could get loud in other headphones. Like the human hair could really hear this the most, the 1K to 2K range or 1K to 3K range. And like I said, there's not a lot of high end, so we wanna take that out just to leave some room for the hi hats and the kick and all the extra shit. Honestly, th this piano should just really be all in one. So I'm just going to route this track to this. So we'll have this effect pretty much instead of, you know, using another parametric to put on this one. I ain't really got to do all that. So. thin it out too much but you do want to get rid of some low end just to have it make um sound clear boom keep in mind too you want to be gain staging as well while you do this so i could gain stage from the parametric eq but then you know as part of my workflow I'm, I'm okay um, leveling it out again right here. A lot of people would tell you otherwise, but once you start to understand concepts, then you can just really do what you want. As far as the snare, let's just hear that by itself. All right, so that's good. Like you don't want to take out too much. And now you see how it's hitting a lot higher.
So for me, now I would want to gain stage in front of parametric EQ just to not throw off the visuals because, and what I mean by throw off the visuals, you see how high it's hitting. If I was to lower this, it's just kind of going to mess with how I interpret it in the first place. So like visually. So I'm going to just turn it down from here. Then you want to A, B, B, A, B it. You can either put a soft clipper on it as well. It, that just kind of works as a limiter, so I could actually just reset it and just had a soft clipper. Like, there's always a workaround to get to, you know, the end goal. So, I could turn it up a bit more, but let's just hear it with the mix. What I like to do is just, you know, compress the drums. Like, you could think, yeah, the drums are hidden right now, but I always still like to put a compressor just to make sure. And I'm going to show you guys how you could use your um, eyes as well with this. That's why I like the Fruity Limiter. People sleep on the Fruity Limiter, but this is really the best visuals as far as um, uh, compression goes. As you can see this is the hi-hats and you want to kind of bring up the lower points to the higher points that's like what a compression really does in the simplest form you want to bring up the attack so that it's not taking away all the transients Like this hair, how the kick just like died out. Now you hear more of the punch again. So find the sweet spot. Turn down the release because if you having your release all the way up here, it's pretty much just gonna be compressed the whole time, and you kind of don't want that. So you want it to be a bit lower. And you can even go very low and it will cause this kind of saturation effect on your drums. So that way you're like killing two birds with one stone, having saturation with your drums. I'm not gonna do that though. bring up the gain because you did take out some compression you see how that's hitting a lot harder and that's all compression G like in the simplest form like compression doesn't have to be like that complicated and if you want more explanation on compression you can just watch my video link in the description gonna saturate the top of the um, drums which is pretty much the kick and a little bit of the snare You get 
this hair a lot more and I can hear also that the kick is kind of punching way too much for my liking like there is you know it's all about preference so I'm just gonna put down the attack a bit lower also turn down the gain just to match the regular level the whole purpose of this gain is to bring it back to the regular level because you are taking out some of the db so you want to bring it back up that's why it's called gain so you can even check right here where it's originally hidden which is like 8 db or 7 even turn it down just a little bit more that's just me getting very you know OC on this now people could really be, now you can really know that your drums is actually gonna be hidden that's why I like to do compression even though I feel like it's already hidden now I could you know after the mix I could be like okay it's gonna translate well because right now like you could think that it's hidden, but you're just only using your own system. That's why you still want to add compression just for other systems. You know, somebody could be using KRKs or, I mean, obviously the average listener is probably not going to have KRKs. They probably going to have Apple headphones and all that stuff. So you just want those to translate well. So you can't really just only go off of your equipment. So the real question is, how do you know when your mix is done? Pretty much all, all the mixing that I pretty much did was just like correction and you know editing more than you know adding effects like i could add like reverb and all that stuff and i'll probably save that for another video just to show you the creative side of mixing but for the most part you really want to just be good with your correction mixing meaning balance and stereo image and all those kind of stuff this is just the basics so like we can we can see if we want to put anything in mono. I'm going to put that in stereo because I like how the guitar feels and I just kind of want that, you know, surround your ears. But keep, remember, you still got a gain stage because stereo is gonna make it a bit louder. You gonna perceive it like that. Keep in mind there's already reverb on a piano. Like certain sounds already have like some effects on it. So it's like, just keep those stuff in mind. So you don't do too much. Like a lot of you guys are trying to do too much because you think you gotta put reverb and all that and all that but if you're using like Omnisphere, Nexus and all that most of these sounds have like you know it's already quality sounds so you don't really have to do too much and if you want your drums to just be even more crisp then just um, put a sound good and eyes on it too much though let's just hear how that sounds sound good in eyes it works even just that little you know a little a little goes a long way maybe even add some reverb on the clap
and as far as panning, you ain't really got to get too crazy. Like, you got to really analyze what's going on in your mix, and I'm going to show you. Piano right here, piano one is slightly to the left and the right, it's stereo, same as this one. The loop is more to the right. Hi-hats, just to balance it out, you can just put a little to the left. But most of these sounds, you just gotta pay attention because some of these sounds is already like stereo and it goes left and right, so you don't have to be going crazy with your panning. Remember to level it out again. The open hat is fine, going straight in the middle. And I did say in part one that I would like to see how how I will probably extend it later, so let's just see how that would sound. If I extended this loop. Hey, hey. Yeah, that's sick. And then bring it back. Okay, so what I would do in this instant with this I'll keep it like that and actually just have this part like that I could just cut off that last part And then it will go back into the course. So that's pretty much, you know, how I would go about mixing it. And yeah, like I said, which um is to each his own. You could add more to it. But for me, it's like I'll probably throw some vocals. So I wouldn't want to do too much with the mix right now. So just always have a goal and an intention in mind. And yeah, peace. <laughs>